So we're used to writing our favorite linear equation in this form. If you recall, for function notation, we can rewrite the, the y as f of x is equal to mx plus b. It can also be written as g of x or h of x. Basically what we're saying is that we're going to put into our output what we want our input to be so we can figure out what the output would be. So we're going to do a couple of examples. <clears throat> we're going to start with g of x is equal to negative 2x minus 3. And we're going to do a problem, f of x is equal to 7x plus 15. What if I told you that I wanted your input for both of these to be equal to 4? How would we rewrite this first one? We would say g of 4 is equal to negative 2 times 4 minus 3. Where there were x's, I put my input. Do you guys see what I did there? Try to write this one using the same input for this equation. Compare it to mine. Does yours look similar? Yeah. Okay. What we're saying here is if our input is 4, we're going to put that in where the x is and let's find out what our output would be in this case. So this is equal to negative 8 minus 3. And negative 8 minus 3 would become negative, negative 11. So when our input is 4, our output is negative 11. That means we have an ordered pair. Input would be 4, output would be negative 11. This is a different equation. If we had the same equation and we wanted to find multiple inputs and multiple outputs, we wouldn't use function notation, we'd use a table. But in this case, I have the same input and I'm trying that same input in two different equations, which makes function notation make sense. We're just trying one input in two different rules. In this case, we would say 7 times 4 is equal to 28 plus 15, which is equal to what? 43. So when my input was 4, my output was 43, meaning this ordered pair would be 4 comma 43. If I asked you to refine those with an input of negative 2, we'd have different outputs. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> so further review of 3-2. Um, if you guys want to look at this, this is on page, oops, I just missed the page. Um, page 96 in your textbook. I'm going to rewrite a table that's on the middle of the page. So if you want to turn to 96, you don't need to write what I'm writing unless you want to. So we're going to write a linear function rule from numbers in a table. And in this case, there's a real world context around this. The X here is the number of bracelets and the Y is the cost. Because whenever we have a cost, it always depends on something else, correct? 
If I buy one bracelet, it's seventeen dollars. But two bracelets is not thirty-four dollars. How much is it? Thirty-two. And then three bracelets is forty-seven, and four bracelets is sixty-two. It looks like maybe I'm getting a discount if I buy more than one. Or possibly there's a shipping cost that you only have to pay for the first bracelet. Bless you. So what I want you to do is look at these. What's the pattern that's happening in the X's? They're going up by how much? But what's the pattern in the Y's? They're not going up by the same amount from like zero to here. But from here to here, and here to here, and here to here, there is a constant. How much is the difference between 17 and 32? It's 15. What's the difference between 32 and 47? Mm -hmm. And it's also 15 here. So what we're finding is we have a constant. After we bought the first bracelet, it's going up by 15. How much more than 15 is the 17? So maybe the first bracelet, like I said, just costs a little bit more and you get a $2 discount for every other one you buy. Or maybe there's a $2 shipping charge. But what we're going to do is we're going to use what we know about this equation. And we're going to see if using information from this table, we can write the whole equation. So I'm going to rewrite this as f of x. And I'm going to put the constant in for the slope because that's how much it's going up by each time. And it's going up by 15. Now, this time, I'm not going to put my x in for, my, for here. I'm going to put my output. I'm going to put 17 here and 15 times 1 plus b. I've just taken an xy pair from this table, and I've put this in for the input and this in for the output because I want to find out what that plus B is. I think I have a suspicion because I know how much more it's costing for just one than it is for two, right? But let's solve for it. What's 15 times one? 15. So this is 17 is equal to 15 plus B. If I want to solve for the B, I'm going to subtract away the 15. And I get two is equal to B. I want you guys to picture the, the graph that would happen there. Is my line starting at the um, origin at zero or is it starting up at two? So I'm going to call that a, sh a shipping charge, I'm guessing. Or like I said, there's a, a cost for the one bracelet, you get a discount for every other. But the first bracelet is how much more than the others? Okay, so that would mean that I would rewrite this full equation as f of x is equal to 15x plus 2. That $2 fee is there for every other bracelet I buy, but I'm only going to pay $15 more no matter how many more bracelets. I could put 100 in here. If I bought 100 bracelets, they'd be $15 each plus the $2. That would be a deal if that is shipping, right? Okay, let's try, um, try it number two. If you're still looking on page 96, I'm going to rewrite the table that is um, B. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the table to find what our constant is and use the equation to find the missing piece of the equation. So in this case, I have my X and my Y. And again, the X's are going up by just one. As soon as I start writing these y's and I'm starting to think, what is the pattern? What are they going up by? What's happening between one and four? Plus three. Plus three. Does plus three keep happening? Mm -hmm. Then that's my constant. 
So I'm going to write this as y is equal to 3x plus b. And let's take any pair from the table and plug them in for the input and the output so we can find what our, our y-intercept is. Which of these pairs do you guys want to use? One, two, three, or four? Two. Two? two? Let's use two. So my output for two is four. My input for two is two. And that leaves me with just the variable of b. This is why practicing all those literal equations you hated was important. Are we solving for a variable here? Is the variable different than x or y? Okay. I've got 4 is now equal to 6 plus b. What am I going to subtract by? Mm -hmm. And I end up with negative 2 is equal, oops, thank you, negative 2 is equal to b. So I'm going to come back over here and rewrite this. I've got the rest of this rule now, don't I? So the equation is y is equal to 3x minus 2, or f of x is equal to 3x minus 2. You guys chose this xy pair. That's not the xy pair we did in second period. Do you guys want to see their work? They chose 4 comma 10. Here's the 4. Here's the 10. Do you see what's happening with the equation? 3 times 4 is? 12. And then we subtracted the 12, and what did we end up with? Negative the same number that we got with you guys, which makes sense if you think about it. Because if my rule here is 3x minus 2, I always like to think about this in a table. If I'm putting in 1, 3 times 1 minus 2 would give me 1. So if I'm picturing this is the rule, the equation that's going between this input and this output, does it work with the numbers that we have? And it does for all four of them. It would work if we put 50 in there. Okay. So with that, we have 17 minutes of this class left today. Here are the problems I'd like you to work on. Page 100, numbers 13 through 20. And if you've got questions on last Friday's work, that during this work time would be a good time to check with either me or Miss Bryant. Okay?